So you've just seen something strange. Perhaps the logs on your VPN server show a user who's sitting right next to you has also just logged in from Hong Kong. Or someone on your customer service team notes that they can see an accounting file that no one should have access to. Something strange has definitely happened. Is that strange thing a cyber incident? How do you decide and what do you need to do in case you decide that it is? Just about anything from discovering malware to identifying suspicious user activity could be legally defined as a cyber incident under HIPAA security regulations. So how do you know when it's time to implement a full incident response plan? The correct answer is that it's always time to implement your incident response plan. Let's go over the key elements of an incident response plan and important things to consider when you think you may have been the target of a cyber attack. Incident response is typically broken down into six phases. Preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. Most organizations mainly focus on containment, eradication, and recovery, and completely skip lessons learned. But the truth is, this last phase is potentially one of the most important. Preparation. Preparation is as straightforward as making sure you have a trained incident response team, either employed, on retainer, or at least someone's business card so you know who to call. Identification. An incident is initially identified in any number of ways, leading you to start your response plan with only slight awareness of what the incident may be. The identification phase is meant to clear this part up, this phase also includes the investigation of the depth of the compromise, its source, and its success or failure. Identification is done through a view of log files. Lots and lots, and sometimes lots and lots and lots of log files. The important consideration at this point is not to disrupt any potential evidence of the incident. A well-trained and equipped response team will be able to rapidly parse log files, review forensic images, and do so without damaging any evidence in the process. Containment. Containment often happens concurrently with identification or immediately following. Damaged systems are removed from production, devices are isolated, compromised accounts are locked down, the bleeding stops here. Eradication. Eradication is exactly what it sounds like, removing and remediating any damage discovered in the identification phase. This is normally done by restoring systems from backup and re-imaging workstation systems. It's important to note that proper eradication of a cyber infection should be done by trained professionals and should only be done after comprehensive investigation to the incident is completed. Time and time again, small organizations will be quick to delete, restore, and re-image after the first sign of an incident before they've learned how the attacker got in or how much damage was really done. In many cases, when systems are reset so quickly, the organization has no way of going back to learn what happened and, as a result, are often hit by the same type of attack again and again. Recovery. Recovery is the testing of the fixes in the eradication phase and the transition back to normal operations. Vulnerabilities are remediated, compromised accounts have password changed or removed altogether and replaced with more secure methods of access. Functionality is tested, and day-to-day -day business resumes. Lessons learned. The last phase is one that many organizations skip, but it's arguably the most important to prevent future incidents. Lessons learned involve reviewing the steps that were taken during each phase and improving both your incident response capability and your security footprint. If you rush to get back up and running but never stop to consider the implications of what caused the security incident, you may never improve your cybersecurity standing. Whether it was human error, security holes, or a flaw in a security product, your organization should review what went wrong and use the incident as a stepping stone to work towards a solution. Without this stage, you may find yourself running back through these steps again and again with every subsequent preventable incident. What now? Incident responses are best performed by persons trained and equipped for it, with proven processes and full support from leadership within the business. 
In addition, with the advent of cyber insurance, it's becoming more and more common for a full response to be required before settlement can be made. If you have any questions about cyber incident response or suspect you may be compromised, contact Infogressive today. We're here to help.